Hi guys, so I have a very minor form of schizophrenia where basically I'm going to describe some things that I see. I am never was afraid. I know some schizophrenics are afraid to describe what they see, but I never was afraid to see it. Actually, it was kind of like a pro-social form of schizophrenia where I talked about it and a lot of people were interested in what exactly I was seeing and how exactly I was behaving when I was seeing those certain things. So today I want to talk about exactly what I saw and how it sort of even started. So when I was a kid, I had um, sort of like a fever and I was given this first pill, the first pill that I ever was given. I remember when I was just like, maybe, maybe like um, five years old or something, I saw a pill where it was illustrated, uh, mom uh, in a stick figure form in white uh, holding a child. I don't know if any of you guys know this medication, but the first time I took this medication, uh, my parents, they were kind of sort of like, um, you know, talking to me, babying me and putting me to sleep. And uh, they were watching like a horror movie and then I took this medication and I went nauseous and I was like trying to see imagery from the horror movie kind of go through my mind and I, I think I was even maybe like a couple months old. I don't fully remember my age but I remember the situation and the nausea was making me hallucinate as if I was starting to appear in the environment of what I was seeing on the TV and as uh, there was a lot of blood and gore I was uh, like trying to close my eyes I had a little bit of nausea and vomiting and I sort of was adapting to the environment and seeing that person that I saw on the TV seeing him inside my mind as a form of a visual and that was the first time I've experienced this um, sort of uh, you know hallucination and over the years when I was a young kid uh, I would have uh, my mom would put me to bed and I would see a witch behind my mom with red eyes and black claws and she would look at me and she would uh, like climb the wall sort of and I was like thinking like wow am I uh, was I possessed at that time was was something really wrong and crazy with me or was this an actual physical entity in form of space and time just interacting with me on from another dimension so uh, I was like really wondering because I was a realist and a rationalist and I was thinking like logically what could this this might have been and uh, apparently this uh, lady and this witch over time started communicating her thoughts that her child died in a car accident and that she wanted to take care of me but she was jealous of my mom and how my mom was going to bed and sort of laying beside me at night and sort of putting me to sleep and I kind of uh, started developing a relationship with this uh, monster but I was still afraid of her because I understood that she is like on the outer side a monster but on the inner side she's a very caring caretaker and sort of I know a lot of shamans they end up seeing things like this in their life and in their practices when they're becoming more of a greater shaman and I was like relating that later on to that experience but it looked like she was opening a portal to another world and I was being welcomed there so um that that was kind of the vibe I got from her when I was like eight years old or seven and um she would basically uh wait till my mom left and everything in my house would start coming to life like the dishwasher would turn on by itself the tap would open it would open several times maybe it was like a poltergeist or something but uh, it was it was re nevertheless pretty uh, pretty terrifying and pretty cool at the same time and uh, this uh, witch lady, she would uh, eventually, as my mom would have parties, I was kind of hesitant to go to sleep uh, during uh, this time, like during during when I was a kid. Um, and I went to sleep and I knew that she is under my bed and her, she is sort of like an apparition and she's very light and I could feel her mass in her body and she would come outside of the bed and 
and she would stare at me and I would pretend to be asleep so she wouldn't like uh, do anything to me because I was still afraid of the witch and um, she would climb uh, walls and ceilings and she would look at me and I would pretend to be asleep so she would climb closer and onto my face sort of trying to see and, and nudge me trying to see if I would wake up but I uh, never uh, really want, wanted to wake up during that time. But one time she went under the bed and she saw that I wasn't being nudged. So she's happy when I'm asleep. She feels like she's a caretaker. And uh, basically I got up and I really was felt uncomfortable. I felt like there was this presence again in the room. So I wanted to leave. And as I, want, and as I left, I, I stood up put my feet onto the floor and below my bed and I ran to grab the doorknob and turn it and twist it and go out to where my mom was partying with all her friends but as I went and I started running towards the door and opening she saw me and as she saw me she ran for me she ran for my ankles grabbed them pulled me under the bed uh, took her claws, black claws, and stabbed me in the stomach, and I woke up again as if it was Happy Death Day. When I saw Happy Death Day, I got the chills, I swear, all over my body. I was, like, freaking out that it was, like, similar to that. And, um, basically, yeah, and I would have a limited amount of tries to get out of this scenario, and she would, like, spawn me back into my bed, and I would try to escape her, so that was, like, one of the first interactions I've had with an entity as I was growing up, and as a typical entity, as many people see these uh, black shadow creatures with red eyes, and they call them shadow figures, right? So this was the first interaction I've had uh, with that shadow figure. Also, I want to mention, when I was only a couple months old, I was taken by two mean kids into their basement, and they put on their dad's quote, and they had a theater, like a abandoned theater below their house, and it, it, they scared me really hard, well, well, really hard when I was a kid, and I got so afraid that I didn't talk for several days. I really want to understand and get to the point of what is schizophrenia exactly and what is it that happens in the mind. So I'm willing to say everything that happened to me when I was growing up to try to kind of understand what it is. And several times it brought on hallucinations, like later on when I was already a teen, I was sitting in my computer, I wasn't getting any views on YouTube, and then out of nowhere I get uh, 6 million views, and I get that jolt of dopamine, that craziness, the 30 million views, and then these views just keep on going up, and I'm, I'm hallucinating, I'm super happy, I'm like in a crazy psychotic state, psychosis state, like wow, how is this happening, and then... One minute later, 30 seconds later, I realize I'm sitting my computer and there is no views and this was just a hallucination. So that's also like how it happens in short, short forms. Uh, then it uh, transpired as I grew older into this constant vision of the spider descending right down where my face is. And it's what they say in dreams. It's like a that you're going to be super creative. And I was working on uh, a communication method for people to communicate speaking in a proactive sense um, in a better form of expressing themselves to other people in society. But the spider was descending down onto my face. And every time I would dream of like having spider senses almost of the spider and I was seeing the spider in my dream and it could be even a very malicious item malicious figure or creature uh, descending down onto my face but at one dream it was actually the same spider so it would descend halfway I would get the tingling sensation that a spider is descending down I would open my eyes a physical spider would be going down onto my face I would roll off my bed and this happened several times guys I would roll off my bed and I would crash onto the floor and it and the spider uh, would nowhere be nowhere to be found wouldn't wouldn't crawl anywhere and I would just like rub my head puzzled like 
why was the spider trying to descend down onto my face like what was the point of that but it was sort of training my reflexes as a kid and it really trained them up really well and from being unconscious and dreaming or like almost unconscious and then conscious fully in in society in the world but it would go uh, smoothly from dream state fluidly the descent to uh you know physical um being alive now i remember this was in italy uh, I got burned really bad swimming on those water mattresses. So I would go with my grandma back to home and she would put like um, mayonnaise on me to sort of um, sour cream, sorry, sour cream on my skin to sort of calm the burns. And I was burnt like second degree. This was this time. And uh, I hallucinated that my grandma was a skeleton in that uh, I had x-ray vision uh, for around 10 seconds and I saw she's a skeleton and I almost jumped out the window and it, it was crazy it was crazy but I think that was just from sunburns but it's just an interesting event that happened also and uh, later on I was uh, mostly lived my life uh, in my teens mostly around my grandparents and they raised me and I would have sleepwalking dreams. I would have dreams that would perfectly smoothly uh, transition to reality. Like I was bit on the hand fighting a wolf in my dream. And then in, in real life, I uh, took my hand and I swapped the the lamp and the lamp cut my hand and I was bleeding out of the, out of uh, from the lamp that cut my hand because I swiped it. And I would look on my hand and it would be bleeding. And I would wake up and I would be like, no way. Oh my God, is this real? I just got bitten by a wolf in my dream. And now I'm waking up with a bleeding hand. Like, where is this coming from? And there would be moments like that. And it would it would slowly, gradually, as I got to um, university, uh, become even more apparent. The schizophrenia divisions would intensify. They would become stronger and stronger. And uh, now I think they're fully in um, recession. No, what was it? Um, yeah, I think that's the word, yeah. Uh, and basically, when I was in uh, university, I would read about this information about these people called olfactory people who could send people's egos and have big noses and they're sort of antisocial and i'm pretty an asocial type of person and i would read about them and out of nowhere i would start seeing people manifest in the forms of those individuals where they would sniff me like a black man would just walk by while i was on, on having a picnic and beside the university and he would go like this sideways he would walk by me. He had a, like a very big nose. He would stop. He would look at me. He would take a sniff. And he would sniff me and he would relieve himself like. And then he would continue walking. And those type of people started appearing. And uh, also people who are known to be sound vectors started appearing. Which is what my channel is about. Is people with big ears sort of that, that move ideas abstractly through society. That have abstract intellect and intuition. That are really good at understanding specifics. That a lot of people are just not understanding intuitively with the fabric of society. And those uh, individuals... Uh, started appearing with big massive ears so here's what happened here's a scene from the schizophrenia so i'm walking uh, from university and i'm waiting for the bus and as i'm waiting for the bus i out of nowhere see two people in black suits one guy with big ears massive ears and he starts reciting binary code for presidential deaths like zero zero one one zero zero one one two zero 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 or like one 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 and the other guy he would be having a big nose kind of like a baba yaga and or or a shark nose as you would say it and he was just sniffing people around going around sniffing them and i would be in the center of these two and i'd be like to the individuals in the bus stop i would be like do you guys see this these people are crazy and it would be funny because 
I would think that I'm normal when actually I was, well, I, I, tr I, I try to be normal. I, I have normality. I barely hallucinate these things, but when I hallucinate, I hallucinate. And uh, I thought that people were not reacting to them and everybody just kind of froze and sort of like we're just minding their own business. And then these two individuals um, just, they don't react to me and i'm confused why they're not reacting to me they're just doing their own thing i walk past these two individuals and as i walk past the bus disappears uh i blank out i'm walking in the middle of the road uh the bus left already i'm walking on foot uh, i blanked out i'm surprised that no cars have hit me nothing like that happened and I'm walking and I'm confused and I sort of have this like confusion in my brain sort of like did I just pass through another dimension and I'm walking as I'm walking out of nowhere I see pollen from uh from flowers generate around me in a form of a uh purple and orange hue tornado and they just start going around me and I'm like am I getting possessed and they're going around my entire body, a tornado around my entire body with leaves and, and pollen. And then the pollen just swoops as a tornado really quickly, stops and goes straight into my nose. And it is a, like a sensation of three seconds of, of, of a stream of pollen going into your nose. like, And you're like, ah. And, and it is crazy. It is crazy. And then I was like, back to normal like that wasn't having no headache i wasn't confused everything was normal and i was just back to normal so there is there is this type of things um there's things that people have said around me long time ago like my girl ex-girlfriend she told me that um we used to live together in a um in a place and she told me that uh, there was a person who died in that place long time ago where there was a domestic conflict where the wife uh, smashed the husband with a pan and killed him inside this, um, inside this basement, inside this house. And um, basically we were living there. And I was like, uh, um, she was getting weird feelings. She's like really sensitive and stuff. And she said that she's a horrible person. She wants to die. Uh, she, she, she doesn't want to die. She wants the, the demons to forgive her or something like that. And I was like living with her. And I was like kind of puzzled. I was like, really, what's uh, happening? There's, there's positive parts about it. But uh, I'll describe a few events from this part of the story. So um, what happened is I would go to sleep and my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend was kind of abusive she would hit me all the time she would uh try to dominate uh with attention over me and i was kind of like tranquil and sort of minding my own business and she would in the middle of the night um hit me really hard and she said this is just for uh for you being you or something and then out of nowhere a picture that was like i was sleeping to towards the wall and there was a picture frame and the picture frame would fall on top but it was closer to me because i'm beside the wall but it fall on top and it would fall on her face and she would wake up and she would be like i'm sorry i'm sorry please don't take me away please spirits love me uh sorry forgive me whatever and i was like really really glad that she got at least punished by some uh, force that is not my own physical hands and i was like pretty impressed with that type of stuff um i dream a lot about a lot of things when things got stressful i would literally see pennywise the clown i would have like an action strip go like this like and then a guillotine fall on my eyes and i would wake up and i would wake up in sweats I thought that it was like sort of a dream, maybe a hallucination, maybe a mix of two stuff like that happened. Um, but with her, um, the next thing that happened is one night we were sleeping and she's like, I think somebody is watching us. And I'm like, really? And I'm the one to not hallucinate about that stuff. And she's like, yeah, I think a demon is watching us as we sleep. And then 
at other times she said like you're like a succubus in behavior and i was just like very unemotional to the point where uh, lights would pop and um what do you call it mirrors would crack and i was like because she passed by and she had negative energy while i was uh doing things with tarot cards the stuff like that happened before and another time what happened was she basically said that yeah i think some demon is watching us she fell asleep i had a night terror where basically a black mask was on her face it came off her face and it jumped on me and as it jumped on me i woke up with a night terror saying like what the f is going on like are you this is crazy and uh i couldn't sleep no more so i went out and this is like a stephen king uh part of the hallucination where basically i go outside i say i can't sleep anymore i'm not gonna sleep anymore i'm sweating i don't want to i go outside and i'm walking and as i'm walking in the middle of the road and sort of like um things are like it's a normal night out of nowhere i see a fog roll in and this fog rolls in everywhere around me as i'm walking on the on the pavement and i'm walking and i'm crossing the street and then out of nowhere i hear five four five guys in a car uh driving by and they yell really loud and they yell super loud and they yell into my ear and i get very paranoid and in the hallucination in the deja vu uh, state i take a little rock i don't know how this impacts anything but i throw this little rock pretty sizable rock at the driver it's sort of little and the driver dies and gets into a car crash and all his friends that were assholes die and their car sets on fire and it, and sort of i'm walking in the middle of the road and then i come back to my senses and i'm like did i just like astral project into some death of somebody and i'm walking and i'm like really confused i'm like what freaking is happening and uh i noticed that i'm walking in the same road say a minute or two uh, later and as i'm walking there i see the same car pass by and i see the same rock on the floor they scream into my ear i get this deja vu feeling of paranoia and and like sort of aggression because like oh my god they're screaming in my ear again they screamed it in the hallucination now they're screaming in real life and it's like copying itself i'm like predicting the pathway of the future or some something associated to that and i get really angry and i think of taking that rock and throwing it i pick it up in my hand it's a little rock it's not really going to do much i don't understand how this hallucination really makes sense but this that deja vu feeling makes me want to drop that rock back down onto the ground and i just uh, walk away i let my anger chill and i keep going and that was it um from that point uh there was a few more hallucinations where um i don't know like um i don't like to say some of them because family members are on the internet um but but it was a positive one i guess i'll say it anyways i guess i will um there was this time which i am really confused by what is real and what was fake uh i think my mom said that she had some form of cancer that the doctors might have diagnosed her with and that day i was really sad and i was so sad that i went and i was like i need to sacrifice half my life to create a ritual where i would give my mom uh, a, an object like a water in this case filled with my life energy so i could give half my life energy to my mom so she wouldn't uh so she would get better and i would just cut my life expectancy off a little bit and it was a very altruistic motive i know and uh basically i did that and i gave her the water and she drank it and then that was the day that i hallucinated uh um I was sitting in my basement just on my computer 
And then out of nowhere, I see all these spirits. They come around in a circle and they're transparent spirits. They're glowing and they, they're animal spirits. They're spirits of uh, different types of characters and creatures. They just come together around the house. And as they wait there, they stop and they don't move anywhere. And they just form a circle around the house. Then the Grim Reaper comes and the Grim Reaper comes and he starts knocking on the door and then I get worried because I'm like is death coming and then I freak out and I'm and my vision sort of how I see all these spirits around the house is I get I get taken up high into the air and I get eagle eye vision and as I get eagle eye vision I see all these spirits and and that time I also saw the grim reaper now the grim reaper starts coming uh you know coming through the door he doesn't even need to open the door like he was already invited and he, i see him and he and i don't want to interrupt his journey i'm very curious where he's going and he's slowly going through our living room uh going up the stairs slowly up 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 all the stairs and he's going towards my mom's bedroom where my mom is sleeping and i'm so nervous i i, I don't know what to do i'm in shock i have shock after shock and i really want and i start to run up to to the spirit and as i run up halfway i sort of get stopped by a force and the grim reaper stands in front of my mom as she is sleeping he looks down on her for a little bit and then out of nowhere he he decides and i scream no 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 please don't take her don't take her away and and he stares at her he looks at her and then he leaves back down and then i i see that in the vision and i'm like oh thank god the grim reaper left back down the stairs and is going back to whatever place he came from and i go back down to my um to my basement and then out of nowhere i hear this voice <laughs> And I come up there and it's something he's saying in Latin. Sadly, I don't understand Latin. And he said something to me and there was air pressure coming from the door, like wind coming into the basement door. And I pull my ear and I try to open it. And then eventually I open it after the wind stops uh, pushing. I open the door and I see that he's gone. And that was another uh, part of what I ended up seeing. And yeah. That was that was that uh i was the next morning uh she comes back gets her test results or or a few days later was it uh she gets her test results and they the doctors say they made a mistake for that cancerous diagnosis and i don't know if if this is all a hallucination or if this was real i i need to reconfirm it which which i'm going to do eventually and that was one of the other ways of what happened um there was a hallucination that was questionable because it could have been actually uh a hallucination uh that is real like like not like it could have been that this event was real and wasn't fake but and this is the final event that really got me thinking about all this hallucinating things with schizophrenia. It was an event where I went on a double blind date and I was kicked out of, a, I think it was like a mental mental home or something. Uh, I, I just met this girl on Jamo and I went on this dating app and spent some time talking to her she was bipolar suicidal i came to her and tried to calm her down and she was like really infatuated and uh the the guards saw me talk oh talking too much to her they kicked me out it was 2 3 a.m in the morning and i was walking it started to rain i came up to this bus stop I spent some time there. Then I see a guy in a gray hoodie going towards my direction, walking towards me. And then out of nowhere, um, he would start running towards me and he would charge me. He would take out a knife and he would run uh, towards me. But uh, he would put the knife away and sort of run closer to me and then just run past me. And then I was like, 
did Akai have a knife or did he just run psychotically at me? It was kind of weird. But um, before that, before he appeared there, I also had like a, like an interaction with him in another dimension almost where I just wonder, I really want to go pee. So I go beside this bus stop, same location. I wander into the forest at night and I wander in there and I'm like wanting to pee. And out of nowhere, this guy comes out with a white restrained jacket like this, chomping his teeth like that, like a crazy maniac at me. And I run out of the forest. And anyways, um, I'm standing. I hallucinate this. I hallucinate that. I'm a little confused where he came out from. And I'm sort of like thinking like, where did this guy appear from? Because there's two storylines going inside my head. And there is one person that is physically in that location. So uh, out of nowhere, uh, he starts making faces like this. Uh, chomping his teeth. And I'm like, oh, like crazy. And, and he puts his face towards the... Uh, bus stop um, clear glass chomping his face is going crazy turning into a zombie or something going super crazy and I say well man do, do you need some help like uh, are you okay or well, what's going on like why are you so why are you being so weird like and and I see he's in the restraint jacket and I'm like did this guy run away from the hospital on a on a break or something that was my first thoughts and then he runs across uh runs across the street that i say hey man do you want to talk you you're kind of a weird cool person i really want to know more about you and then he runs back and he waits for the bus and i wait for the bus with him and he's like uh, leave me alone don't talk to me and i'm like okay and uh, he comes uh, into the bus. He talks to the bus driver. <clears throat> says to the bus driver, oh, um, Sir, I'm sorry, this person is bothering me. <clears throat> and uh, he points at me. And I say, oh, I, 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 don't, I don't really know this guy. I'm just like, he was acting weird for a little bit. So I just was questioning why he was acting weird. So, yeah, we get let on to the bus, and then the bus drives, and then he looks at me as I'm sitting in the bus, and, uh, you know, the bus driver let him on with a straight, r white restraint jacket in a, in a gray hoodie, so I was, like, really confused. I guess he was hiding that he was mentally ill or something. He gets off at a stop, and the bus driver has zero reaction. People in the bus have zero reaction to him wearing the restraint, a white restraint jacket from, like, a mental asylum place. And I'm just really confused. So there is that. Um, there is uh, another story <clears throat> where basically... Uh, um, Oh, wait, let me remember. Uh, trying to remember it. What is it? Uh, oh, yeah. So, I was talking to a Satanist who had uh, been part of the Red Cloak Club. And this Satanist was basically uh, starting to flirt with me online because she was a girl and she was interested. And she said, I have a demon named Sarcasm. And this demon Sarcasm, he, I got him while playing the Luigi board with my family at a cottage place. But we forgot to like blow out the candles or send the demon back. So the demon stayed with me from when I was a kid. And I kind of know he told me to tell nobody that i have this demon like that's what she was saying to me and i was like really confused but it was the first person i ever met who had satanic connections and was close to with the um schizophrenic uh auditory hearing uh sense of self and I was like really intrigued by her story, sort of talking to her. We kind of made connection and uh, um, we were flirting with each other and stuff. And then 
uh, out of nowhere the demons like i want to taste my blood and as the demon said that um it was a curse i was a demonic curse that happened uh, the demon told me that he wanted to taste my blood and I said I would rape the demon hierarchy because like, you know, I don't want demons controlling me or intimidating me. I don't want to be intimidated by anything. In fact, so the demon came to my house and the lamp started shaking back and forth i went to uh take a bath and sort of talk to the girl and sort of like describe like uh flirt flirt and tell her like that the demon is not intimidating me in any way and she's like oh you should be scared because this demon is real and da -da -da -da, he's going after you so anyways the lights turn off the skype call the internet goes out like somebody switched off the circuit breaker it happened for two seconds i was using um i was i was touching myself at that point and as i was uh, as i looked down i am bleeding from my fulcrum out of nowhere like i'm in a bath there is nothing i can use and then out of nowhere there is blood in my fulcrum and uh that was like really shocking because i was like almost turned white i started taking pictures i had pictures i sent it to a few of my friends and everybody's like you just cut it and i'm like no the, the i how the lights went off i didn't do anything I, I i was just taking a bath the blood the bath filled with blood i got out of the bath i was woozy i was like kind of going crazy i called her when the internet got back on i'm like what is this craziness why is there uh why did he taste my blood and then basically i was cursed three times the same thing has happened over and over again in different scenarios and i'll describe them um it, day after day consecutively so uh what happened is i was sitting there on my couch i was looking at the lamp and it was shaking 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 then i told her to get her demon back we got her demon back um he went back to her we went on a skype call i said that was crazy she's like i know right you're the first person he ever attacked and in the my entire life and i was like okay okay all right and then i started believing in that a little bit more and out of nowhere uh, as we were talking on the call she falls asleep randomly and the demon uh that is uh like monitoring her there was like a little bit of high static appearing in the background of the skype call and then he says she's asleep and I'm like, yeah, I, I, I could see that. And, 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 then he's, and then I'm like, okay, um, well, I'm going to go now. Uh, so, yeah, have a good night, demon. Bye-bye. And, <laughs> and I went away. And the next morning, I wake up, and I have this friend named Yoni. And Yoni, he's a Jewish guy who dates a girl. He got in a problem with her. He doesn't like his girlfriend anymore, so he called her and said that he doesn't really want to be with her anymore, and sort of he calls me up the next day, and he says, hey, Michael, I want us to go uh, to a strip club. I want to forget my girlfriend because I don't like her anymore, and I was like trying to convince him not to go anywhere because I was saying like, I know his girlfriend. She's like a pretty nice girl, and I was saying like, your girlfriend's really nice and, and good looking, and everything is one she's everything is amazing about her she's a wonderful person and he's like no no i hate her she's not my type la 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 i'm breaking up with her let's go to a strip club so i say all right man all right if if i can't convince you to do anything i guess i'll just have to go with you to the strip club so we go to the strip club and as we enter the strip club we have to buy red bull to stay there so i go through with him through the doors of the strip club as i'm walking i'm looking at one of the ladies dancing on the pole and she's wearing all white and she's dancing and as i look at her she kind of stares at me a little bit she does her dance and i walk walk further away to the bar to buy the red bull as i turn around i see that she uh, uh fell fell off but like there was a thump she fell off the pole she bruised her knees she's bleeding and she's crawling to me with bloody knees and a busted lip 
towards me and says, "Oh, sorry, you distracted me. I thought you fell. Uh, I thought you fell from heaven. I thought you were from heaven, or something like that." And I'm like, "What? No, sorry." I'm sorry. No, that didn't happen. What what are you saying? And then she's like, "Sorry, you're so beautiful. I thought you I thought I fell from heaven." And I was like, "Okay." And then anyways, uh she went back to dancing something. I I lost focus of her after that, after saying, "Are you okay? I'm sorry. I may got you so distracted that you fell." I was very flattered by what was said there. And um my friend didn't make much of it. He just went um uh, we 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 watched a little bit of uh girls dancing on the strip pole and it was it was normal it was my first time probably in the club or second time i just yeah kind of indifferent to it a little bit and then out of nowhere three young girls come up to my friend and they're sort of like really good looking girls and i'm like wow wow she's so lucky that three girls came up to him and not to me and to me I see this in the corner standing uh, beside a door smoking a dominatrix. She's wearing uh, black and red suspenders and, and a fishnet bra. And she comes up to me and she says, Honey, I'm, I'm much younger than I look. And then I say, Well, what, how old are you? Even though I shouldn't ask a girl her age. She says, 56. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to pay for a lap dance for three minutes with a 56-year-old when I'm 18 or something. Like, I don't want to I don't want to do that. But I still did it for some reason. And she was, like, very sensual. And we went in the back. We started doing the strip tease dancing. Like, they started dancing on us to the music. And I'm sort of relaxed. And she's dancing me. Then she says, you could do whatever you want. And I uh, kind of grab her. She grabs me a little bit. And I kind of get into the mood with it. And as I'm dancing and we're grabbing each other and everything is nice and she says, grab me here, grab me there, I do it. Um, she says, are you a bad boy or a naughty boy? And I say, well, I don't know. Uh, I say, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think so. Bad boy. And then she says, well, look at this or something, you know, like, well, well look here. And she goes down onto my pants and sort of... Uh, puts her lips on my uh, genitals and takes a bite, takes a really hard bite on it. And she says, I thought you like it. And I hear the, the warm blood rush through my body into the wound that she just created with her teeth. And she's like, I thought you would like it. And I was like, uh, no, why did you do that for? Like, I was like really confused and sort of like hating her at the same time, feeling sorry for her because she might have mental problems. So that was the day that, that was the second time that I got bitten on the fulcrum and the urethral area a day right after the, the demon has attacked me. So then uh, I go back from the club, I look at my whatever thing, see how it was bitten, and I'm like kind of confused, whatever, you know. Uh, and then I go, uh, I wake up in the morning, I'm ready to go to school, and I, or high school, and I zip up my pants, and my zipper gets stuck in my foreskin, and that was the third time that the bleeding happened. And it was three times, like, the mark of the beast or whatever. No, that was six. Um, you know, like, possession happens in three forms. So that was the third form that it happened in. And I was shocked that the same area was targeted three times. Could be a coincidence or whatnot, but it was real. And I had real blood and people saw it. So it wasn't a hallucination of any sort. Yeah. And that's, that's a couple of schizophrenic stories uh, based on the way it feels and the way it's like. And if you're schizophrenic or have any interesting experiences or have any similar experience, would be interesting to hear you, your, um, your, your journey, your thoughts. And your thoughts on it if, uh, you know, 
if you have it or not have it i would say i have like very low amount of schizophrenia so i know people have more but this is uh the all the hallucinations i had in my life and i don't even know if they're like spiritual awakenings or hallucinations but there was also a lot of weird events like i was going on an uber in a taxi and then one of the taxi drivers said that his house was cursed and uh right after i had a issue with um with the demon and my girl ex-girlfriend uh having a problem with the demon trying to take control of her who's like a demonic observer uh i was in the uber and this guy said that uh i want us to pray for my demonic experience and i was like in the uber uh because my family is being attacked by demons and it was just like a like a coincidence that he has the same problem that i have and i'm just like kind of confused but that is what it is and yeah that's uh part of the some of the stories of the schizophrenic experience told word for word without any creativity any adjustments just how it is i hope you like this and i hope you found it entertaining i want you guys to leave a comment um your thoughts and if you've experienced something like that if this is schizophrenia or if this is just a, a, a spiritual attack or maybe it's just a coincidence and not schizophrenia at all though it does make me have like a weird confusing mindset every time this happens so i'm not really sure if it is schizophrenia or not but it is seemingly like schizophrenia i hope you guys have a wonderful day night and i hope you guys can comment and tell me what you think and yeah that was the podcast or lecture or story time on the schizophrenia and i was wondering how your experiences went and if they want anything similar to this i'd love to hear it comment below bye bye